Welcome trucked up guys and gals to another trucked up rant. This one lit a blowtorch underneath my keister and when my butt starts smoldering, things get ugly. I understand why people feel the way they do. So let me qualify that right up front. People got a reason to be mad because of what they hear. And that's about EV incentives. The narrative goes like this. EVs would never sell without EV incentives. Nobody would buy these things. The only reason that anybody even considers buying them is because they get a whole bunch of free cash. It's bribery. It's how the government's trying to get us to buy into this crazy idea of EVs and EV trucks replacing our good old gas and diesel vehicles with something that's just so unreliable and dangerous. Okay, well, inside all of that might be a few kernels of truth, but most of the EVs that have been purchased all through the increase in their popularity and demand didn't get any EV incentives. For a lot of those sales, including companies like Tesla, many times those vehicles never qualified. Some went in and out of qualification because the price would go up and down and just go over the cap threshold for getting these EV incentives. But a lot of the early ones, you didn't get anything. You got nothing for a Model S. You got nothing for a Model X. You know, you certainly aren't getting anything for a Cybertruck or a Hummer today. So why have it? EV incentives are just another incentive out of thousands of incentives that have been done over the decades that have been very effective. Take, for example, everyone getting free Hummers back in 2003, remember that? No. Nope. Well, guess what? They did. Lots of folk got huge benefit to going out and buying themselves some pretty hefty metal real estate. Oh yeah, back in the 1980s, there was an incentive, a tax deduction for small business to buy themselves a truck. Anything over 6,000 pounds, I believe it was, is a big ass vehicle and you could get yourself 25K back in your pocket for your small business. Well, in 2003, George Bush Jr. upped that to $100,000. And the requirements to get your hands on the cash were very, very sparse, very limited in, uh, let's call it oversight. So basically you could just make yourself a business card, Freddy's toenail clipping service, and you could go get yourself a Hummer. You could go get yourself a Cadillac Escalade. You get yourself a Chevy Suburban. You go get one of those Armadas or Lincoln Navigators. Oh, those babies were big. And guess what? Everybody went out and bought buckets of these massive vehicles. And it was a huge take for all of these legacy automakers. Well, I wonder why. So, what do you call that? I call that an incentive. So if you want to incentivize a whole bunch of production at your auto facilities and get a whole bunch of V8s and V10s and metal on the road, well, guess what, it worked. But let's go back even further. Do you know how most Americans heated their homes back in the 1920s and 30s? At that time, 55% of Americans heated their homes with coal. Now coal, they soon discovered, was killing people. Coal was producing a lot of pollution very bad for the lungs. There was all kinds of things going on with coal that were not good. So they needed to phase coal out. So how do they do it? I mean, everybody had, uh, you know, coal furnaces. Uh, they had coal stoves. So Western governments, both in North America, both in Canada and the United States, incentivized the development of oil and gas for homes. So natural gas exploration received all kinds of subsidies and incentives. And home use, switching over to natural gas, received all kinds of incentives, means to encourage people to make a change to something that was better for them, the environment, their home, and their budgets. And between 1940 and 1960, the use of coal in households dropped dramatically. You know what else dropped dramatically? Mortality rates dropped by two and a half to three and a half percent in the United States alone during that same time period. So we can definitely see that these incentives helped people. So do we have incentives in other ways? Absolutely. For example, logging, mining, oil and gas exploration, offshore drilling, 
um, development of new technologies, there's innovation incentives and grants, there's breaks given for pipelines, for example, to ship bitumen, okay? So all of your oil and gas pipelines that are being sold have massive incentives attached to them or massive subsidies for infrastructural development. So all of those things are massive amounts of money being given to corporations to incentivize them to do something that somebody thinks is a good idea, just like George Bush thought it was a good idea to have everybody drive Hummers. So that is an incentive. And that is exactly what we have with EVs. To incentivize change rather than, we're forcing you to do this right now. Instead, an incentive is given to try to encourage people to make those changes and also understanding that these things are a lot of freaking money. I mean, if you wanna go out and buy a Cyber Beast Foundation, uh, Cybertruck, you're looking at $120,000 US. That's, that's nuts. That's a huge amount of money. Hummer's the same thing. We don't see the Silverado EV on the market yet, other than the work trucks for fleets. But when that comes out, that's going to be well over $100,000. The GMC Sierra Denali is going to be well over $100,000. So this is unreachable numbers, unattainable numbers. So we need to get those prices down so you can afford them. And at first I was really upset when I found out that all these incentives were capped at a certain dollar amount. But you know what? I gotta give them credit. Because what's the first thing that happened when these EV incentives rolled out? What did the manufacturers of these EVs do? They raised their prices. So by capping it, it forces the EV makers, if you wanna get your customers to get this free money, you gotta get this price down to this cap. So it's forcing the price down, not up. So we've seen these kind of incentives happen time and again to help people make a change. Do you wanna have an EV? That's entirely up to you. Do you wanna have an EV truck? That's entirely up to you. Now some will say, no it's not. They're gonna force me to do this. I'm being forced into buying them. Phasing out takes a long time. Phasing out of coal took a long time. 20 plus years for people to make the big change over to natural gas. So we're talking phasing out uh, fossil fuel vehicles over 11 more years. And that's just talking on new sales. And I got a funny feeling that's gonna change. If there's no replacement vehicle that steps up and does that, it's not gonna happen overnight, even if you're thinking 20, 2035. It could be 2040, it could be 2050. Right now, there's no EV truck on the market that comes close to replacing the, the versatility and the durability and the long-lasting range and towing capacity, I've gone over this ad nauseum, with diesel trucks. So until that can be replaced with an electric truck, how can you possibly demand that people replace it? That's not gonna happen. And that doesn't mean every vehicle on the road is gonna be restricted. This is about giving money to people. This is the same as giving money to improve people's efficiency of their homes, to, to get them a better roof, to, to, to incentivize people to improve the insulation in their house. This is your money coming back to you. That's how I look at it. But I think we're there, folks. I think that incentives are soon not gonna be as important because that pressure has worked. All of these things seem to be working in favor of getting prices down so people can afford stuff. That sounds like a good deal. That's my rant, that's what I think about it. You know, agree, disagree, that's called a democracy. That's awesome. And I wanna hear all about it. Please let me know in the comments below what you think. I can't believe how much support I've got and the comments that are coming in, I just absolutely love. It's giving me inspiration to make new videos and I'm gonna be making a couple just based on the comments that were made in the last video. So please, please, please love to hear from you. Please click that like, subscribe and bell notification if you haven't already. It keeps little channels like this going. So thank you again. We'll talk to you next time.